Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. This is going to be how to use the DSP to simulate a rotary Leslie speaker on a Yamaha PSR E463 keyboard. A little history. When I was a 12 year old boy, my family lived next door to a nursing home. And that nursing home had a B3 organ with a Leslie speaker. The owner of that nursing home was my mother's best friend, and I had been taking piano lessons for about five years. So the owner let me come over at night when the dining room was mostly empty and play that B3 organ with that fantastic Leslie speaker. So in this video, this is what we're going to do. If you take a B3 organ, instead of sending the sound out to the built-in speakers, you send it out into this Leslie speaker, and out comes this glorious music. And I'm going to tell you all about the Leslie in just a moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Yamaha PSR E 463 keyboard and instead of sending the sound out to the speakers I'm going to send it into a digital signal processor and in that digital signal processor I'm going to simulate the sound coming out of a Leslie speaker so what I'm trying to do is play an organ on my keyboard and have it sound like it's coming out of a Leslie speaker. That's my goal. Now, will it sound exactly like that? Heavens no. This is a $300 keyboard. This is a $15,000 B3 organ. This is a $3,500 Leslie speaker. So no, I'm not going to sound exactly like that, but I'm trying to achieve the effect of a rotary speaker. So what is a digital signal processor in simple English? Well, it's an electronic device, and these are a few of them. How much do they cost? Oh, anywhere from $25 to six or $7,000, depending on how fancy a one you want. So what does the di digital signal processor in my Yamaha keyboard look like? It looks like this. It's just a little computer chip. So an entire digital signal processor is now shrunk down to one simple chip that goes inside my keyboard. How do I control it? On the far left side of my keyboard, there are a couple of buttons and a couple of knobs. And this is how I control what comes out of this digital signal processor. I'm going to go through this in details in just a moment, so bear with me right now. Let me tell you about the digital signal processor settings on this particular E463 keyboard. There's the rotary speaker, and in this video, that's all I'm going to talk about. It would take me three or four hours to go through everything and you would get bored and you wouldn't watch it anyway. So the rotary speaker is one thing we can do. There's something called distortion one, distortion two, a chorus effect, a flanger effect, a phaser effect, tremolos, auto pan, and low pass filters and high pass filters. I'm going to ignore all of that except the rotary speaker. That's the only digital signal processing that I'm going to talk about in this particular video. So let me tell you about a Leslie speaker. It's big. First of all, it has a 300 watt amplifier. When I was a high school kid, my best friend and I played electric guitars and uh, my 
guitar amplifier had 75 watts. When we turned up our 75 watt guitar amplifier, I rattled all the dishes in the kitchen and my mother would scream at us, turn down that darn guitar. So a 300 watt amplifier is huge. It has a 15 inch woofer speaker, which is big. It has twin horn tweeter speakers. And I'll show these to you in a minute. It's about a yard tall. It is about two feet wide. It weighs 125 pounds. And if you want to go out and buy an original one, it's going to cost you around $3,500. So this is a real significant speaker. If you turn it around and take off the back, this is what you see inside. There are actually two speakers. Up in the top, there are these horn tweeters. And these things spin around and around and around. Here in the middle is the 15 inch woofer and it points straight down and there's a baffle down below and this spins around and around and around. Let me show you what these look like. This is the horn tweeters and these spin. And so when you send music into this, you get this woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-wo
it so happens this time it started with the rotary SP, which stands for the, the rotary speaker. This is number one in the DSP, and this is what we want. So you use your little uh, dial wheel, if necessary, to dial up setting 01, which is rotary speaker. This is what we want, rotary speaker. Now, once again, let me bring your attention back to the left-hand side of the keyboard. This is a very important button. This is a button and it toggles two positions, keyboard backing, keyboard backing. And every time you press it, you switch from either the keyboard or the backing. What this means is when you have this set up to keyboard, I am applying the rotary speaker to the main voice on my keyboard. Okay. If I click this and set it up to backing, I am going to apply the rotary speaker to the style. I wish it said style, but it doesn't. It says backing. Think of it as the backup band, which is the style. So this little switch determines, am I going to put the speaker on the main voice or am I going to put it on the backing, which is the style? So that's the significance of this word. I want this set up to keyboard. I want this rotary speaker to be affecting the main voice that I've set up and I've set up uh, an organ, okay? So this I want to be set on number three and that is controlled by this little button, the knob assignment. And you just sit here and click it. And every time you click it, it goes from one, two, three, four, five, and it starts over again. One, two, three, four, five. You and I want this set on number three. So this knob assignment, I just keep clicking it with my finger and I watch my screen until it says number three. Okay. Next is I want this to say keyboard and that is controlled by this button, the keyboard backing button. And once again, every time you click it, it switches from either keyboard to backing. There is no on and off. It's just a two position switch, keyboard or backing. So just click it and you want the word keyboard. So I want number three on the knob assignment and I want keyboard, which means I'm going to control the sound of the organ, which is my main voice. Now, there are also two knobs. Once I have this set up as keyboard, and once I have this knob assignment set on number three, this dial, this rotary button here, this is how I'm going to control how fast my Leslie speaker uh, rotates. So as I turn this clockwise, my speaker will rotate faster. So it'll go wah, 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 wah. If I turn it to the left, I slow down the speed of the rotation. And it'll sound like this, wah, 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 wah. So once I've got everything set up, this is the button I use to control how fast does the speaker rotate. This button affects how strong the effect is and also how loud the effect is. I don't use this very much. I pretty much kind of leave this alone. I, I set it somewhere in the middle and just leave it alone. This is the button or the dial that's important. This is going to control how fast the speaker rotates. So Maury, uh, does the rotary speaker digital signal processing only work on an or organ voice? I mean, is that what this is all about? No, the rotary speaker DSP works on any voice you choose. And it also can work on any style that you set up. 
and I'll show this to you when we go live at the keyboard. It just so happens I grew up using it on a, a B3 organ, so that's how I naturally think of it. And that's why in my little video I'm using an organ, because when I was 12 years old, that's what I loved. Turns out, back in 1965, the Beatles actually used a Leslie speaker and they plugged in their guitars and they actually plugged in their microphones and sang through one on a couple of records. So, I'm talking and in this video I'm mostly figuring out how to use the Leslie effect on my organ, my main voice, but how do you set up the DSB to work on the style? And the answer is this keyboard backing button. Instead of setting it to keyboard, that's the main voice. If we set it to backing, now we are applying the rotary speaker effect to the style. I wish it said style, but it doesn't. It says backing. Think of it as the backup band, which is the style. Okay? So that's how you set this up so that your rotary speaker is affecting your style. You just click on it. Once again, very important is set up your voice and or your style before you begin to set up the rotary DSP. Because if you don't, uh, everything you've done will be wiped out if you change the voice or change the style. It wipes out all of your DSP settings. So set your voice, set your style, then turn on and select the DSP. So what I want to do now is I want to turn on my video camera and let's go to the E463 keyboard and let's listen to the rotary speaker digital signal processing in action. Here we are at the Yamaha E463 keyboard and I'm going to show you how to use the Rotary SP digital signal processing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my main voice, my right hand, first as a rock organ and we'll listen to that. Then I'll set it up as a 1960s classical guitar electric guitar, and we'll listen to the rotary SP on that. And finally, I'll set this up as a cello, and we'll listen to the rotary speaker SP on that as well. So, I've gone in, and the first thing I did was I set up my main voice as 023, which is rock organ. Then I pressed and held the DSP, and I made sure that I was on the rotary SP, which is zero one. And I use my rotary wheel here to select that. Okay, I've done that. On my keyboard backing, I have it set for the keyboard. And on the screen, I see the word keyboard, which means we are working with the main voice, not the backing, but the main voice. On my knob assignment, I have set number three, and on my screen, I see number three. And what that does is it lets me use these two dials to control the digital signal processing. Okay, we're ready to start. So I've got an organ. Now I've turned on the DSP, and over here on the left, I have nothing cranked in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the organ as I slowly turn this knob clockwise, bringing up the speed of the rotary speaker. Listen. Hear it? You can hear it now. I'm going to put it a little faster. Here it is without. Here it is with. Gonna make it a little faster.
that's too fast. A Hammond organ doesn't ever go that fast, so I'm going to slow it down. That sounds good to me. So that is using the rotary SP applied to a rock organ. Now I'm going to change my right hand. I'm going to call up the main voice, 046. And this is a 1960s clean electric guitar. Now I need to go back and turn on my DSP and get that set up once again. So I hold it. And it turned out it came in at 09. So I've rotated my wheel and I'm looking at rotary speaker 01. Okay? So here's a guitar. Now I'll slowly bring in the rotary speaker. Just beginning to hear it. A little faster. A little faster. Here's without. Here's with. it a little bit slower. That's what my guitar used to sound like back in 1962 when I was a senior. Okay, let's change the instrument and I'm going to go to voice 082, which is a cello. Now I have to go reset my DSP, so I press and hold it. And I'm using my rotary wheel to dial in 01 rotary SP. Okay, so here it is without. Oops. So I'm going to crank in a little with my knob over here. A little faster. A little faster. This is without. This is with. I can make it really fast. That's too fast in my opinion. That's nice. Okay, so that's three different instruments applying the rotary speaker effect to each one of them. So now let's change from the main voice to the accompaniment to our style. First thing I need to do is press keyboard backing button, click, and I'm now looking at backing. And what backing means once again is I'm going to apply the effects to my left hand to my style. So now I'm going to press the style button and I'm going to dial in 035, 035 which is called an epic ballad. And it sounds like this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing that, but now I'm going to slowly crank in some of the rotary speaker effect. So here we go. The 
this is without. This is with. Without. With. Okay. Quite frankly, a lot of styles just don't work with the rotary. And I'll leave it up to you to decide whether it works or not. That one kind of works, I think. So let me set up another style. Style 039, which is called Love Story. And now I hold down my DSP. And it turned out it came right up on rotary. That's where I want to be. So let's just listen to it without anything. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly crank in, using the A knob, the rotary SP effect. Okay, here we go. Here's without. Here's with. A little faster. Here's without. Here is with. Okay, so that is using the Rotary SP, which is Rotary Speaker, digital signal processing on several instruments in the main voice and then using it with a couple of different styles. I hope you have found this helpful. If you have, leave me a comment. Until we meet again, thank you for watching and be well.